Hello and welcome to HackerMath.com. In today's video, we're going to cover the central limit theorem, right? And in the central limit theorem, there's a few things that are important to know. Um, firstly, uh, we usually work with things that are approximately normally distributed, right? And if they're not normally distributed, we look for the case that our number of samples are greater or equal to 30. Once they're greater or equal to 30, our sampling distribution uh, becomes approximately normal after 30 values. And so we can treat them just like we would z-scores. And particularly in this case, we're going to see a sample that's greater than 30, which we have a sample of 36. I'll go into that into a sec in a second. But for the most part, let's begin by what we're, what we're covering in this video. So we're describing the sampling distribution of the sample means. And let's take a look at a question so we can get a bigger introspection in it, all right? And another thing to remember is that when you're doing things like central limit theorem, you're dealing with cases of averages upon many days with different averages. And for that reason, our sampling distribution becomes approximately normal if we have more than 30 samples. And, and for that case, we're going to be referring to the z-score chart table for it. And it references everything just the same because the t-score chart becomes normally approximate after 30 samples or more. All right, so let's begin with this problem so we can see the question and the solution to the problem we have here. Now, the number of violent crimes committed in a day possesses a distribution with a mean of 28 crimes per day and a standard deviation of four crimes per day. A random sample of 36 days were observed and the sample mean of the number of crimes for the sample is to be calculated. Now, in this case, we notice a few things. For one, we weren't told that this is normally a prog this is in a normal distribution, right? So we don't know if it's, approx it's normally approximate or not. But because of the number of samples we have, since it's 36, this becomes no uh, approximately normal. And besides that, we also see the averages are per day, and we have 36 days to account for them. Because of this, we're using the sample means for the sampling distribution, right? So now our, our case here is to find the mean of the sampling distribution of x bar which is mu of x bar, and the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of x bar, which is also known as the standard error, which we subscript as sigma with a subscript of x bar. So let's begin with the sampling, the mean of the sampling distribution of x bar, right? So now when we're calculating the mean of x bar, we have to remember that the mean of the subscript x bar is always going to be equivalent to the actual mean. This doesn't actually change at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to look up the mean, and we see the mean is 28 crimes per day. So here we're going to have the same value with 28 crimes per day. All right? And to get our standard error, which is also the standard deviation of the sampling distribution, we have sigma x bar. And this one is actually going to undergo a little bit of a change because the sampling distribution, the standard deviation of the sampling distribution is always less than the actual standard deviation. We're going to get the standard deviation divided by the square root of n, where n is the number of samples that we have. And in this case, remember, we have n being greater or equal to 30, which means we're using the central limit theorem's formula. And also, we have our sigma right here, which is four crimes per day. So we're going to get four, and we're going to divide that by the square root of 36, because these are the number of random samples, right? You see a random sample of 36 days. So we're going to put the square root of 36 right here in the bottom. We're going to simplify this. Take the first step, take the square root, four over six. The square root of 36 is just six. And this, we can divide or simplify first before dividing. We get two over three, which is also 0 0.5. Six seven after we the set of infinite sixes because this is a continuing decimal with repeating decimals. This becomes zero point sixty seven. All right, and there we have it. This is our standard error, zero point sixty seven, and our mean stays the same. It's twenty eight. All right, thank you.